peace in pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters from all around the world. Welcome to King Said So. I'm your host, King053, Mr. Easy Imali Enengeneng, and we back at it again with another one. Wow! What an interview by Mr. Carl Nias at the EFF uh, Studios. Um, we need Madikizela um, Mandela uh, House, the headquarters of the EFF. They decided to bring Mr. Nias in and interview him there. And I think it is so very important to highlight that if white people wanted to, if they really honestly had a heart like Mr. Carl Nias, they would question themselves, why should they support the apartheid system? Mr. Carl Nias is one veteran of the ANC. He's one historical figure in South Africa that will never be forgotten. When he's long gone, they will write books about this man, speak about this man. And I think him going to the EFF was the best move that he has ever made for his life because I think his political chapter is going to close at a high note. What he, what he did going to the EFF, he showed, he showed me that he had brains. I honestly thought that he was going to go from, from Conto Caesar, even after joining the EFF. So surprisingly to know that he knew about Conto Caesar before it, for, uh, uh, it was formed. So I watched the whole interview and I decided, no man, let me just chop it up into 16 clips that I want to highlight crucial points that he speaks about there. Shocking, shocking. Um, unveilings that he's doing there shocking show shocking news that is bringing to us the killing of chris honey and the anc uh tito mbeweni Ramaphosa, jacob zoom there so many things Tabombeki, he, that he spoke and that really touched my heart and i was like wow uh, really here we, we've got a political mind the eff did a good job by uh bringing this guy to to be interviewed so i decided let me know let me chop it up into 16 videos for someone some of you who are lazy to watch the whole thing and you want to come here at king said so watch the um the the the, the very snippets uh, important clips i'm here for that so the first clip i want to bring about is him speaking about him standing up for black people and standing up in in, in university university level for for the unbanning of liberation uh, um, what do you call it liberation movements liberation movements to say no unban this anc and all of these other uh, liberation movements let's quickly listen that this university must be integrated mm -hmm. i stood for the student representative council saying we need a fully integrated university and nelson mandela must be released from prison and the ANC and other liberation movements had to be unbanned. Mm -hmm. At that time, the liberation movements were all still banned and Mandiba was still in prison, together with many other political prisoners. Mm -hmm. Because I said that, and because I put up posters at the old Rand Afrikaans University, I was expelled from the university. Mm -hmm. So my education was interrupted. Mm -hmm. My dad very conservative man okay was furious mm. because now i lost my bursaries to study in fact the family was plunged into financial difficulties because they had to repay mm -hmm. the bursaries that i got from afrikaans bursary schemes mm -hmm. from a bursary scheme that was known as the afrikaans tal and kultuur vereniging mm. and when they heard that i was expelled they said this communist child we want the money back. We're not going to pay for someone who behaves like this. So you were considered a sellout? I was considered a total sellout. I was considered to be a traitor. Beautiful. So the second clip I want to bring in is him speaking about um, his family, you know, how his father kicked him out of the house. That's how you know that um, African people, they are really heartless to the point where they will kick their own child out for standing up for other people's human rights. And he said, listen, my mother did not have the strength because my mother was not as powerful as my ma as my father. So he, he, she loved me, but she could not bring me back to the house. And one thing I took out there, he said, 
let's be honest, African people, white people have not changed. Yo, listen to this. So you were on your own at the time. Your father kicked, yeah. kicked you out of the house. Was your mother of the same sentiment? Did yes. she also reject you? Look, my mother, of course, is a mother. Yes. So she wasn't as strong as my dad. Mm -hmm. But remember, in the Afrikaans community, it's a very patriarchal society. And the woman in the house, the mother takes the lead from the father. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't really go against my dad. Uh, she tried to be kinder to me than my dad was, mm -hmm. but she couldn't bring me back to the home because my dad said I had to leave. Yeah. And you must understand that the rest of the Africana family mm -hmm. on both sides, from my mom's side and my dad's side, mm -hmm. were very much against me. In fact, they thought I was absolutely the worst possible thing that could have happened to the family. Yeah. And many of them up to this day still reject me and they've not accepted me. So they don't appreciate the fact that you chose to be on the side of the native uh, people of South Africa during, you know, their time of oppression and obviously during the apartheid era. Titus, we have to accept mm -hmm. that the majority of white people and also Africana people have not changed. Mm -hmm. The reality is that they still hold on to those old ideals of apartheid. They still want to continue to think of themselves as a superior race. The reality is that they still hold on to the land. Mm -hmm. Behind you, there's a poster. It says white people own 72% yes. of the land. Mm -hmm. That is a reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm very clear that the land must be returned to the people. On clip number three, one thing that caught my attention was him speaking about something that we spoke about on this channel for a long time, to say the ANC was infiltrated by outside forces, meaning outside donors. So because of the good life that outside donors come, this rich white um, uh, businessman coming, funding the ANC on via the back door, and then giving some few leaders some good money, uh, good benefits, and, you know, some privileges that the rest of the ANC uh, did not have. It made the ANC to depend strictly on those people. So the, uh, uh, the cadres then turn on each other because some were, gay, were benefiting and some were, were not. Let's listen to this. And I believe at that point, the African National Congress was still a revolutionary organization. Mm -hmm. But the ANC got infiltrated. Okay. And that infiltration started already during the exile years. Mm -hmm. Because there was a plan by the big white monopoly capitalist companies in this country, also together with international imperialism, mm -hmm. to infiltrate the ANC. To also make some of the leaders of the ANC dependent on the funding and the finances that they were giving them. Mm. And they were starting to buy over people. Also, the intelligence services infiltrated the ANC, the CIA, mm -hmm. MI6, MI7 from the British side, mm -hmm. and many other Western intelligence agencies. Yeah. Okay. And so now I just want to yeah. emphasize this because right, sure. already in the mid 1980s, mm -hmm. When the ANC met with the big captains of industry oh, yes. from South Africa mm -hmm. in Lusaka. Yes. If you listen to an interview that Comrade Ronnie Casuals mm -hmm. gave many years later, he says, I was absolutely shocked and surprised by how quickly the leadership of the ANC went belly up mm -hmm. and agreed with those captains of white monopoly capitalist big industry that the economy should not change, that there should not be a transfer of the land and of the big means of production into mm -hmm. the hands of the people. Mm -hmm. So then already the ANC had been infiltrated. Okay. But the worst thing that happened to the ANC was during the negotiating process, during Kudesa. Yes. When obviously people like Cyril Ramaphosa, Praveen Gordon and others mm -hmm 
had already been made agents of white monopoly capitalism. But they were still appearing there as those who were working for the people, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carl Niels also spoke about um, the assassination of the of of the of Chris Hani, um, the Communist uh, Party leader Chris Hani, and he says there was no coincidence that Chris Hani was um, assassinated the way he was, and that is something that weighs very deep in my heart. Um, I love Chris Hani so much. Um, I watch his clips. You know, some of us are too young to have to have um, really experienced these people while they were still alive. Um, but I love how he moved and the way he talked. And I just wish that really if there is some African uh, African National Congress leaders that were involved with the, with the killing of Chris Hani, that they will tell us before they, they take their last breath. Because the man that, Chris, that assassinated Chris Hani was quickly released by Thabo Mbeki, and, the, and, and Zondo. Zondo, the first thing that he did when he got into uh, the chief justice position, he he released he released the man that killed Christian. Judge Mokhweng Mokhweng refused. He said, "I'm not refusing. I'm refusing to release this man because he's not showing any signs of being sorry about the murder. He's 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 not showing nothing." To the family and the family said listen we need this guy to tell us who told him to assassinate our father our husband why were, was uh, chris honey killed and 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 um uh nias carl nias is touching a little bit on that let's quickly listen to what he said they never wanted him to become president okay. another thing that i believe very strongly titus is that it was no coincidence that comrade Chris Hani was assassinated. Is it? Comrade Chris was one of the most popular leaders in this country. Mm -hmm. And he was one of those who saw what was happening mm -hmm. at Kudesa. And he was criticizing mm -hmm. what was happening there in very clear terms. I remember a week before he was assassinated, I shared a stage with him in Boxburg, yes. where he said, Kudesa is going to be the death of the liberation struggle. It's going to destroy the ANC. Mm. The compromises that are being made, the compromises on land, the compromises also on the so-called sunset clauses, mm -hmm. the way in which civil servants from the white community are being guaranteed their jobs until they will retire, mm -hmm. will make it impossible for us to be able to change this country and give to our people what we've promised them. And I'm convinced that there were not just a little right-wing clique, Clive Darby Lewis and Janusz Walusz, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I'm convinced that there were also senior members of the African National Congress who were part of these sellouts, who had already become part of these people who were now in the service of white monopoly capitalism, mm -hmm. who saw that Chris was a real danger to them mm -hmm. because his popularity was unsurpassed. Mm -hmm. The likelihood that after Madiba retired, that Chris could have taken over as president was huge. Mm -hmm. And the white monopoly capitalists and imperialists said, never in our lives, mm -hmm. because this man has not bought into mm -hmm. the new liberal sell-out policy program that we have introduced, that we have infiltrated into mm -hmm. the African National Congress. He has to be removed. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why comrade chris was assassinated so the and way, i believe yeah. i must say make this point mm -hmm. i believe that it is critical and i hope that when the economic freedom fighters finally become the government of this country mm -hmm. that we will return to investigate properly mm -hmm. what happened with the assassination of chris honey and how and who 
were involved also from the side of the ANC. Those files mustn't be closed. It is part of our liberation history, mm -hmm. and we owe it to the legacy of Comrade Chris to come out with the whole truth mm -hmm. and nothing but the truth. Now, in this next clip, he speaks about Nelson Mandela, his, his, his term, and, and how strong Nelson Mandela was. And then he jumps on Tabumbeki. He says, listen, Tabumbeki had the two-third majority. Tabumbeki had the most uh, seats in parliament than any president of, of, um, of the ANC. So he could have changed the laws and give back the land. In fact, Tabumbeki was the last hope for us in terms of uh, the African National Congress getting two third majority. There will be, there will never be another political party that will get that will get get a two third majority, especially not in our lifetime. We don't know if the EFF wins the elections and does brilliantly in government. Maybe the following five years, pe more people will vote for it. But I don't see a scenario where they get uh, what is it? Is it eighty five percent of the vote or eighty eighty percent? of the votes because of the uh, uh, external external factors funding other parties to make sure that no party uh, gets two-third majority as black people we are divided into 600 part, uh, 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 political parties i mean 600 political parties that's that's madness it's just there to divide the black vote so that it does not go to one movement Let's quickly listen to what he said. 1994, the 27th of April 1994 elections. Mm -hmm. And Madiba cannot be separated from that. But what I do believe is Madiba wanted to give us the first step mm -hmm. towards our democracy. Mm -hmm. We had a responsibility to take it further. We had a responsibility to now implement radical economic transformation programs mm -hmm. to give us that economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. But we never did so. In fact, instead, we did nothing mm -hmm. to change those dynamics that were first embedded in this new liberal constitution. Mm -hmm. One of the people I blame for that is Thabo Mbeki. Thabo Mbeki was the president of the ANC with the largest majority mm -hmm. in parliament. He was the president who had a two-thirds majority. Mm -hmm. He did nothing, do law law, <laughs> with that majority. It was wasted. Yeah. He could have changed the constitution because he had the two-thirds majority, the power to do so. Mm -hmm. He could have removed section 25 of the constitution. Mm -hmm. He could have returned the land to the people. He could have nationalized the South African Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. He could have taken that clause in the Constitution that gives the Reserve Bank this very, very narrow definition that it is only supposed to concentrate on inflation targeting and it mustn't get involved in economic policy and economic growth mm -hmm. programs. All of those things that our fellow fighter, Advocate Busisivim Kobani, in her report, mm -hmm. the SIEX report and about APSA mm -hmm. and what happened with Bangkok, mm -hmm. she wrote in that report also that the South African Reserve Bank's mandate should change. Mm -hmm. Now, Tabu Mbeki knew that it had to change mm -hmm. if he really wanted to bring yeah. liberation and economic empowerment. The most important question that most people ask uh, to Mr. Carl Nias is, why why did you join the EFF? What made you join the EFF? And he answers it with a few sentences like this. What made you join uh, the EFF after such a long time uh, being with the ANC? As I said to you, mm -hmm. last year I decided the ANC is beyond redemption. Go and read my resignation letter. I say the ANC is finished. Mm -hmm. It's dead. I move on. And then I created, together with a couple of other comrades, the African Radical Economic Transformation mm -hmm. Alliance. Mm -hmm. Now, right from the beginning, Areta said our purpose is not just to exist for the sake of our own existence. Mm -hmm. Our purpose is to advance 
a radical economic transformation in this country. Mm -hmm. And our purpose is to work for unity amongst the progressive left. Okay. Because we believe very strongly that it is all only in our unity mm -hmm. as the left that we will be able to get rid of this sell-out ANC government. And then obviously the follow-up question to why he join what made him join the EFF is why didn't he join the MK party because honestly up to me I said name is Carl Nias is going to join MK it made sense that he being the only person black or white who has attended every court appearance of um, Sholozi the only person, this person was showed loyalty to Jacob Zuma like nobody's business. It was a no-brainer that he would join um, Mkonto Wesizwe, also being part of Mkonto Wesizwe himself. So it was like, Neman, he is going to move to Mkonto Wesizwe. But when he moved to the to the EFF, it was a shock. Was like, oh, what is this now? And his reasoning, reasoning capacity makes sense. It shows that he's a, it's a, it's a man who can think. Let's quickly listen to um, him speaking more about Jacob Zuma calling him to join Umkonto Wesizwe. This is welcome. where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And I see on social media there are those people who say to me, well, you, why don't you go to MK Party? Yes. We think you should come there. Yes. We think the culture of MK Party suits you better. Why? Mm -hmm. There's no such. Mm -hmm. I've made a clear, unequivocal, very mm -hmm. rational decision yeah. to become a fighter in the economic freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. Let everyone understand me clearly. Mm -hmm. I knew that President Zuma was going to announce okay. the MK party. Mm -hmm. It didn't catch me off guard. Mm -hmm. He told me exactly what he was going to do mm -hmm. in advance. Mm -hmm. And I told President Zuma exactly mm -hmm. what I was going to do and the other members of Areta were going to, to do, do in yeah. advance. Yeah. We knew yeah. when we called that press conference two days before he made his announcement mm -hmm. that we were going to announce that we as individual members of Areta are joining the economic freedom fighters. Yeah. And I'm here to work. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to play. Mm. I'm here to be available for any job yeah. and the EFF wants yeah. to give me. I told the commander in chief when I met him on Saturday, mm -hmm. I'm here to work. I'm at the service of the economic freedom fighters. Tell me what to do. I will do it. And now yeah. we must campaign and fight to make the EFF the largest party that will become the government mm -hmm. of South Africa after the 2024 elections because this 2024 mm -hmm. must be our 99. Mr. Carl Nias calls and names the EF, the ANC uh, um, a criminal, a criminal institution, a mafia republic that we are, we are sitting in. He says, listen, these people are just there to steal. He speaks about Fikile Mbalula, he speaks about pala pala and um you know it's just crazy the things that have been happening in our lifetime um under the anc quickly listen to what he said here we've had a serious discussion up to now now yeah. you want to come and lower the level of the discussion why not i want to understand i mean someone comes out now and say the anc misled parliament misled the public about uh, a swimming pool being you know a fire pool what do you make of such statement <laughs> is it a last kick of a dying horse <laughs> what do you, you make know of there's an old saying mm. those that god want to destroy he first makes mad <laughs> Are you saying and i listen that? to that madness by Fikile Mbalula. So what he was by implication telling us is, yeah, we, we, we're backing President Ramaphosa, we're covering up on Pala Pala. We know that it's wrong, but we're continuing to do it because- In defense of their it, we We are in defense mm. of this crook and we will continue to do so, mm. regardless of what we know is wrong. Mm -hmm. 
That is what he was really telling us. You see, and that is what we have been saying, the ANC has become a criminal enterprise. It is no longer even a political party. It is a mafia institution which is only concerned about the sustaining of its own power, of the money that it can steal from the people of this country. Mm -hmm. And at the head of this organization, as the old saying goes, a fish rots from the head, oh, yeah. is the main mafia character, mm -hmm. Sir Ramaphosa, because there is no way, there is absolutely no way that you can defend what happened at Palapala. Mm -hmm. It was criminal in terms of the amount of money there, in terms of the breaking of the various rules and the regulations around foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can justify not reporting a so-called crime. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can justify gender-based violence because a domestic worker, a woman domestic worker, mm -hmm. was illegally detained and tortured. Mm -hmm. You cannot justify what the South African Reserve Bank did. You cannot justify what the South African Revenue Service did. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot. Yeah. And Advocate Usisiva Ngabane asked 32 questions mm -hmm. that exposed the whole rot that was going on there. Mm -hmm. And in return, she was immediately suspended. And as a thank you for a service to the nation to mm -hmm. try and get the people of South Africa to realize how deep the criminality in our country goes, she was eventually mm -hmm. impeached. Yeah. So that is... He doubles up and says, President Cyril Ramaphosa is not a president, he's a mafia. They've been running this thing from way back, way back. And um, these are not politicians. They are just there to push the white monopoly capitalist agenda forward. Huh? Listen to this. ...conduct of a don of the mafia. And that is what Cyril Ramaphosa is, a mafia don. He's and not the president. Yeah. He should never have been the leader of this country. Yeah. He was parachuted. Mm -hmm. And I, I must talk about this for just a second. He was <laughs> parachuted yeah. into the leadership of the ANC in 1991. Mm -hmm at the then Durban conference coming from nowhere. Mm -hmm. No one actually even knew if Cyril Ramaphosa was at that stage when he walked into that conference a member of the ANC. Mm -hmm. I sat two chairs away on the stage mm -hmm. from comrade Oliver Reginald Tambu. Mm -hmm. And when Ramaphosa walked into the conference hall, he said, Obani oh, Law, <laughs> who's that? <laughs> that who's that nobody mm -hmm. at the end of the conference suddenly was the secretary general mm -hmm. why because the white monopoly capitalists came and told madiba make ramaphosa the secretary general irene menel clive menel harry oppenheimer mm -hmm. those were cyril ramaphosa's campaign managers oh. for him to become the secretary general of the anc Okay. It was a disaster when he became Secretary General. I worked with that. So man. the same modus operandi repeated itself in 2017. Well, it's actually a bigger tragedy because yeah. one of my disagreements, of yeah. my few disagreements that I had with President Zuma mm -hmm. was in a disagreement that I had in, in, with him in 2012 when Ramaphosa was brought in at the ANC's national conference in Mangahung as the deputy president. Mm -hmm. And when he was elected, I walked onto the stage. I went up to President Zuma. I said, President, I'm leaving this conference. I'm not even going yeah. to wait for your final concluding speech mm -hmm. because this is the biggest mistake mm -hmm. that you've made in your life. Yes. I know this man. I worked with him. He's a sellout. He only cares about money. You will regret what you've done today to resuscitate his political yeah. life yeah. for the rest of your life. And a while ago when I met President Zuma in Kandla, he said to me, you know, you were right. I said, yes, it's sad that I have to say I told you so. Yes, and of course, being an EFF member towards the end, he says, listen, people, stay with the EFF. There's so many other political parties 
that have popped up. There's so many things that is happening, distracting us as Africans to focus on the African agenda. Stay with the EFF. Stay with the EFF. I don't know. What do you guys say? Let's quickly listen to this. EFF stands strong, unequivocally mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. everywhere and especially also mm -hmm. in KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah. Now, as we wind up, uh, in the build-up to the election, there have been mushrooming of uh, splinter parties, mm -hmm. you know, Rise, um, uh, Sarah, a lot of them mm -hmm. have come up uh, lately. What do you think is their, uh, uh, these political party motives? It's all there to undermine our democracy, mm -hmm. to prevent mm -hmm. the progressive agenda from succeeding. Mm -hmm. They're being financed, as the commander in chief said in the press conference, Rise Mzanzi and these parties are financed by foreign economic powers and even foreign countries' governments. Mm -hmm. The intention is to subvert our democracy, yeah. to prevent fundamental economic transformation from happening in South Africa, to confuse mm -hmm. the voting public in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And our message must be an unequivocal one. Don't allow yourself to be attracted by these fly-by-night mm -hmm. little parties that are funded by foreign funders. Mm -hmm. Stick to your guns. Literally, sure. stay with the EFF, mm -hmm. stay with the undertaking that the EFF has made that there must be economic freedom mm -hmm. in our lifetime. Don't allow yourself to be misled mm -hmm. by the shenanigans of charlatans. Mm -hmm. Stay with the real thing. Sure. And the real thing mm -hmm. in South Africa today is the EFF. Is the EFF. Yeah. Do you yes, so in conclusion, for a a um, old man, I think, what, 62, 60 something years old, uh, for him to 62, 65, somewhere there, he did say his age, um, to humble himself and um, submit himself under young men that um, clearly he knows more when it comes to politics. Um, but it's, in politics, it's not about how much you, uh, you know, it's, it's about how much you do. Because they, they know us don't do anything. And the doers usually don't know much. So it's a mixture of both. You, mixing youth and um, mixing youth and, um, and experience so that the political parties can run. So, excuse me. So he, th he thanks um, Julius Malema. He thanks the, the fighters for welcoming, welcoming him on the political um, party. So I also thank you guys for welcoming me on YouTube, subscribing guys, 1000 subscribers every week. I'm blessed. I'm blessed guys. Like 2024 is gonna be crazy, crazy. I strongly believe that this channel is gonna go from glory to glory. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. This is your Pan Africanist channel where we speak about anything that affects us as African people. So. We speak about unity. We speak about the African agenda, going to that one Africa, one land, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army, one one Africans, one Africa, one language. And so we want to achieve that goal so that we as African can be united and speak in a uniform language when we speak to the rest of the world. And the rest of the world will bow down to Africa because we will be the powerhouse of everything. That is why you are subscribing and joining as a member for only 20 rand to this, uh, to this channel, to this podcast. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, uh, whether you get, you guys get this, um, event, I um, mean, video to, uh, today or tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to try to upload it today. Uh, you'll get it today. So tomorrow, the, the MK party is actually in, in, in Kimberley where I stay. So I'm going to try to get some footages there and an interview with one of the leaders here in Kimberley. So you guys will get that also uh, as soon as possible after I do the interview, maybe Monday or whatever. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for tuning in. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. And after you pray, make sure that you do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace in Pan-Africanism. I salute you. Listen to Mr. Carl Nias saying thank you to the EFF forward to uh, the outright uh, majority uh, victory of the EFF. Uh, anything you want to say as a parting shot? 
My parting shot is to say thank you to the Commander-in-Chief for the warm welcome that I've received in the Economic Freedom Fighters. Thank mm -hmm. you also to the fighters, mm -hmm. those grassroots forces, ground forces of the EFF that mm -hmm. embraced me mm -hmm. and my fellow former members of Areto who joined the EFF. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to work mm -hmm. because 2024 is going to be our 1994. Yeah. Aluta. Aluta. Continua. Yeah,